Autodesk Maya is a very popular 3D software that is used by professionals in many industries like game development, animation and visual effects for feature film and TV shows. If you are interested in this program or 3D in general, you might be asking yourself, is it easy or hard to learn this stuff? Well, in this video, we will try to answer this question by breaking things down so anyone can understand what we are talking about. Number 1. The Basic Level Maya is like any other 3D software in the early stages of learning, especially if you don't have any prior experience. The road is going to be bumpy, but you are going to get used to it real quick. If you are not that kind of guy who is thinking about quitting or how terribly difficult it is even before starting. As a beginner, you need to keep your expectations low because it is a gradual process that takes time and you should be happy with the results that are very simple because I guarantee you that being happy with the little things is the fuel that keeps you going. And to be honest, it is all about embracing and loving the process. If learning, making progress and growth is not what keeps you going in the early stages, I think you will be facing difficult times down the road. Number 2. Intermediate Level As a beginner when it comes to using Maya, everything is exciting to learn, but as you make more progress and you realize more things about the industries that use Maya like game development, VFX and animation, especially if you are learning on your own, you will start to gravitate toward a certain direction because the underlying or the basic skills for those fields are the same. But to be able to say that you are learning Maya for a specific field like game development or animation, you need specialized and focused training whether you are learning in art school or online through tutorials and video courses. I would say that the intermediate stage is probably the longest stage because he or she is still figuring new things out that are sometimes challenging to wrap their head around. But eventually it will become an easy thing through consistent practice. This stage is probably the longest and the most important because it defines you as an artist and what you will be working on in the future. It might take from one year to four or five years. Number three, the professional level. There are too many ways to define a professional, but according to Stephen Pressfield, the author of two amazing books titled The War of Art and Turn and Pro, a professional is not just a weekend warrior or someone who does practice his or her craft as a part-time thing. The professional has both his feet in the field full-time with commitment for the long haul. In order to reach a professional level using Maya or any other 3D software, you need to make it your main thing or at least spend a ridiculous number of hours honing your craft to join the industry that you prefer to work in. You can join a studio that works on visual effects, game development or animation studios and you can also work from home as a freelancer or any other way to sell your services to professionals in the industry. For me, one way to define a professional who uses 3D software such as Maya is a 3D artist that produces work good enough in quality to be used professionally in the industry, whether you work in a studio, work as a freelancer or sell assets like 3D models, animation characters, materials or tools that other professionals use to help them do their work faster and with less effort. When you become a professional, it does not mean that you will stop learning. I would say that the real learning begins when you join the industry because school knowledge is way more simplified than the skills you can learn in the field where stakes are high and you must generate results without excuses. Now we will discuss some of the differences using Maya in different fields, how difficult they are and what it takes to be good at each of them. Number 1. Animation Creating animation using Maya whether you are going to do it on your own or with a team is going to take a considerable amount of time, also a lot of work but not necessarily hard if you have the necessary skills or a talented team of artists working with you. You see, animation is not about animating characters only because there are a lot of stages we need to go through whether we are creating feature 3D animated movies, short films or even video game cinematics. The main skills are first modeling which includes creating props for environments and of course characters. To do this we need to be able to do sculpting, UV mapping and texturing. Then animation 
that usually requires a process that is called rigging, which allows us to prepare a character to be controlled by animators using a skeleton or a set of controls created by specialized artists called riggers, and sometimes done by animators themselves if the project doesn't involve a lot of artists. Lastly, we need to know how to light scenes, create special effects, deal with cameras, and render the whole thing, then put it together. Of course, this is a simplification of the animation pipeline, but it should give you an idea about how the work is done. Animation is not a highly technical field, even though sometimes scripting or programming is needed to do a particular thing. This means it is entirely possible to be a good animation artist that works on amazing stuff if you keep learning and growing. Number 2. Game Development Maya is one of the best 3D programs that studios and professionals use in the video game industry because it has all the necessary tools that they need to get the job done. If you have a passion for making video games, then learning Maya to do this is not going to be that big of a problem. This does not mean that video game development is easy, actually it is sometimes way more complicated than animation and VFX because it involves coding and programming artificial intelligence that makes video games playable and enjoyable. For the most part, Maya is used in this field for creating assets like environment props, whether it be simple or complicated, modeling characters, game levels modular environments that can be used later in the game engine, and of course creating animations that will be used in the video game. Generally speaking, the skills that artists need to have to use Maya for video game projects is similar to those necessary for animation projects, but the major difference is respecting consoles and gaming computers' ability to run video games in real time smoothly, which is very important, that's why game artists use special techniques to do so which is not very complicated to learn once you understand how it is used and why. And the rest of the work is done using game engines later on. Number 3. VFX Maya has a very powerful toolset for creating visual effects, but you have to put in the work to be able to generate good results. Like animation and making video games, the basic knowledge of modeling and animation is required, but there is an emphasis on visual effects and the ability to merge those effects with live action using compositing, tracking, and keying, which can be really tricky and usually needs years of practice to be able to create something that looks realistic and not CGI. Generally speaking, working in visual effects is a fun process because you get to experiment and play around with different settings to get the desired end. Also, to be a good visual effects artist using Maya, it is important to learn some of the fundamental concepts such as color theory, lighting, and composition. And like a video game artist needs a game engine to import the assets that he created using Maya to continue working on the video game, VFX artists need to use a compositor such as Nuke to bring live action shots and visual effects created and rendered in Maya. Number 4. Rendering and Visualization Maya is not particularly known for visualization work, but it can be used for this purpose nonetheless. This field is easier compared to the fields we talked about because you don't need to have highly complicated skills to be good at it. Basically, artists need to be good at basic modeling, dealing with materials, lighting, and rendering which are the determining factors of how the final results will look like. Usually visualization artists and designers can achieve very good results after one or two years of training, but of course, the longer you do it, the better you're gonna become at it. So back to our question, is Autodesk Maya hard to learn? The answer is, it depends on what you are going to use it for. If you are going to learn Maya as a hobby or to work on personal projects, you can take your time to wrap your head around the concepts and techniques of 3D as you make more progress and become more familiar with the tools which basically are user friendly and can be understood after a few hours of practice. On the other hand, if you are planning to learn Maya to use it professionally in animation, game development or VFX studios, it is going to be a little bit different because the expectations are higher. If you join an art school, you need to keep up with the assignments and the projects that will be given to you, which usually are not that difficult, especially in the beginning, because they don't want to discourage you, but as years go by, you're expected to think on your feet 
and the artists that train you will not give you that much guidance because you need to be creative and a problem solver since this is what you will be dealing with on a daily basis when you find a job. If you want to be a professional Maya artist on your own, it is going to be tricky because you have too much freedom, which is good and bad at the same time. It is good because you can learn whatever you want, whatever you want. And this comes with a downside, which is the fact that there aren't people that guide you and tell you what to do, even though there are some amazing artists teaching valuable skills through affordable courses these days that helped thousands of artists learn from home to become professionals working on amazing projects because honestly, studios don't want to know how you learned, they just want someone that can help them create successful projects. I hope you found this video informative and useful. If you have something to add, please leave it in the comment section below. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next one.